Okay, uh, topics on crazy accounting, and although I have a whole lot to actually talk about in general on this topic, um, I'm just going to start out with my little story here, and then get into more details after that. Now the basic deal is, is I, you know, today I was working on a compilation, basically, you know, purposes of, of accounting, uh, a compilation is a form of financial statements that conceivably would look like an audit, but we haven't done any audit testing on it, and we say that when we write a report. I guess I should start with a few basic principles that are, are theoretical that in reality never really come to fruition and <laughs> and then I'll um, go from there and um, expand upon that into some other things <coughs> now in general <coughs> when we do our uh, we do any kind of what's called write-up work for our clients either an audit review or compilation the compilation is financial statements without any kind of examination bias to see whether the numbers are proper no assurance on it that it's not generally mis misstated etc etc when we issue it our report and that's it a review is we just look at it analytically to see if things make sense you know cost of goods sold compared to sales you know things of that nature analytically Analytically, if you looked at my face and I told you I was 100 years old, you would analytically think that's incorrect. That's what analytics involve. But you wouldn't go and get my birth certificate. And if, in fact, I was 100 years old, I would be an anomaly. But um, the only way you could know for sure that I was um, not 100 years old is by looking at my birth certificate. Analytically, you'd be convinced and you wouldn't be able to tell any otherwise that uh, I'm not 100 years old, and that's a review. And compilation is, is just, I just write a piece of paper, or you just take my word for it, basically. <laughs> kind of. I mean, there's, there's no examination on a compilation, but certainly if the financial statements look like garbage, when a banker looks at a small business's compiled financial statements, they look it over and they, it just looks, completely out of the realm of reality, then yeah, they're going to uh, probably not believe it, but they're also, they know that the accountant hasn't really placed any assurance on them. I'm not going to go into all that, and this is not an ethics discussion in that sense, although I do have a little bit of an ethics discussion. I'm talking about cra just basic crazy ideas in accounting. Now, with that basic framework, now the theory is the client's supposed to walk into our office full well and knowing of all the accounting principles that are laid out up to date, it's supposed to walk in, hand us a set of financial statements, we're supposed to just look it over, write a report, staple it on the second page and hand it back to them and they'll go take their report on down to the bank. That never happens. It never happens. And I've yet to find uh, in the environment of having a um, working with small businesses, uh, that is companies that don't do more than ten million dollars a year. You know, a lot of small businesses in this country need help of accountants, and you know, that's the kind of clients that I work with. Probably make you know, make or have assets or sales. It's got to be less than ten million, but most of the time, you know. They're in the thousands, you know, 50,000, 100, you know, stuff in that kind of neighborhood. And, you know, there's normal day to day people that are kind of self employed and do what they do. Okay. So, <laughs> the best our clients can do, and best most small clients, I would even gather to say that most medium sized clients can do, really is. Do their own counting on their own own system give a trial balance to their accountant for them to work with in fact the existence of caseware and the existence of case view to accounting tools case view a tool to to make financial statements out of a trial balance is predicated on the very idea that 
the whole concept that I just outlined where the client creates the financial statements is completely a farce. In fact, if you go to any uh, California CPA Education Foundation uh, gathering of uh, people attending a class, and you were to ask everybody in the room uh, what, the, what uh, write-up package they used, one by one, every single one of them would give you an answer and not even think twice about the fact that um, they're not even, no one is even following the conceptual rule, the conceptual idea that supposedly <coughs> the financial statements are the representation of management. <coughs> okay, so this artificial barrier has been created that doesn't really match up with reality. That's not, that's not even the, that's the tip of the iceberg of the, creative, of the craziness that I'm going to talk about here. Come about, when I first got licensed back in 1998, the basic principle that was to, uh, you're supposed to follow uh, as far as cold, is independence is concerned, you know, let me, actually let me start, go back and outline what independence is supposed to be, supposed to be, independence is that you are, when you do your job as an accountant, you're not going, you're not, you have no stake or personal desire to have the outcome of the set of financial statements go in one way or 